and welcome to the She Clicks webinar about wedding photography. I'm Angela Nicholson and I'm the founder of She Clicks. Now, before we get going, we have a word from our sponsor. This webinar is sponsored by MPB, the world's largest platform for used photography and videography kit. MPB has transformed the way people buy, sell and trade equipment, making photography more accessible, affordable and sustainable. MPB is proud to partner with She Clicks to help support women photographers and their work. So thank you very much to MPB. OK, so that's enough from me. Let's get started. I'm delighted to introduce our speaker, Fiona Elizabeth, who has been photographing weddings and portraits for over a decade. Hello, Fiona. How are you? Hi, Angela. I'm really well, thank you. Lovely to be here. Thank you for letting me come on and talk You're very to you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you contacted me after the photography show because um, you'd done some fantastic presentations and you'd heard about She Clicks and you wanted to connect, which is amazing. Yes, that's right. So um, I had uh, just done this, the, the same presentation as I'm running tonight, I did actually at, do it at the uh, photography show. Um, and I was overwhelmed by the positive response that it had. Um, but it was the second or third time I've spoken in public about uh, wedding photography. Um, and I was on the uh, Beyond the Lens stand for anybody who knows that. And uh, there wasn't a single seat left empty and people were all gathered around the back. Um, lots of questions afterwards, lots of people were interested um, about mastering portrait photography within their own wedding work. And I just felt that it was something that uh, I could share with uh, She Click members because one of my biggest passions is to educate and put something back into the industry and help photographers to really raise their game. Uh, and I really feel that over the last um, five or six years, photography has really become very homogenized. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, we have become slightly um, influenced by what we see on social media. And uh, because it's very quick and very uh, easy to take, we're losing we're losing that craft, um, which means that we aren't we're not competitive anymore, and our competitors are our clients. So uh, yeah, so that's um, that's what the presentation's about. Great. So, okay. Well, over to you. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Okay. So I'll just share my screen. Okay, creating signature wedding photography is definitely a craft and I really strongly believe that this is something that uh, we have uh, lost the art of um, over the years that um, I've, been, I've been photographing. So it's great that you're all here today uh, and uh, as mentioned I'm absolutely delighted to be able to um, share my knowledge with you pass on my experiences um, and inf hopefully um, inspire you to um, create signature photography which will support your business, which will support your brand, which will aid the um, growth of business as well by elevating prices. Um, and so this is a really important part of being a wedding photographer. Um, I've been shooting weddings for uh, well over a decade now and within that time I have picked up uh, a few awards, which I'm very proud to uh, have achieved. I've spoken um, at a few of the uh, major photographic conventions within the country. Um, and it's a real passion to be able to deliver and share what I do. I also judge for uh, the societies and the British Institute of Professional Photography. Um, and uh, how I work is very much in tune with how I judge. So. Um, <clears throat> it's all about standing out. It's all about making an impression and it's all about shining in a very crowded, homogenized market. When I um, Google wedding photographer in Surrey, which is where I'm based in London, everybody seems to be the same. We can all take beautiful images of documentary, reportage style shots, and that's what our clients want. Our clients do want us to be um, uh, storytellers. They want us to uh, document their wedding from beginning to end. Um, and, you know, they're very particular about not wanting to have anything posed. And they will say to us, oh, you know, <clears throat> you have to excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold. 
um, our clients will say, you know, uh, I don't want anything posed. And we say, that's no problem. You know, we, we're here to uh, document your wedding from beginning to end. We're going to take lovely reportage style photographs. Um, we do need to take the odd uh, shot for, you know, family group shots. And they seem very happy. And then what happens is they come back to us, and I have heard this time and time again, that they're not happy. They, they're happy with the, the, the style of uh, and the story of the wedding day, but they feel that their portraits haven't been captured as well as they should. Now, not everybody wants to have something which is so posed and so constructed. But when we do that, what we're doing is we're offering an experience to our clients. We are making them feel incredible. We're making them feel a million dollars. They have spent so much time, effort and energy um, finding a wedding dress, doing hair and makeup trials, uh, um, getting fit for their wedding. You know, they, they want to look incredible. And it's our job not only to be the storyteller and document um, their wedding day as they want it to be um, shown and as they want to remember. But it's also our obligation to be able to create and craft portraits which will really um, showcase their client's beauty and elevate our photography as we are creatives in a creative industry. And this is where I feel we've slightly got lost on our way. <clears throat> so it's easy to be a documentary photographer because we can, uh, you know, stand back and allow the whole wedding to happen. You know, we can put our um, uh, 70 to 200 lens on, we can work, you know, be observant, look for nice stories, look for great light look for the emotion, look for the atmosphere. It's the less intimidating part of a wedding. And I think this is why it's become so popular because um, we, we don't have to actually step up to the mark and say, okay, we've, uh, we've captured these beautiful um, photographs and now it's time for you to um, create your portraits. And it does take a lot of energy as a photographer to be able to um, put our mark on our work. It's also something where we need to find our voice, we need to find our own personal style. And that isn't easy and it doesn't come naturally, but it does come eventually. And it's we mustn't be frightened of stepping up to the game and being able to create beautiful work for our clients. So how do we get our clients to come on board? How do we sell this to our clients? Because it's also intimidating for our clients as well, because they don't want to be standing in front of a camera. They feel slightly nervous. They feel slightly unsure. Um, they feel that the word pose means um, that they are going to look cheesy, that they're going to look uncomfortable. They don't want any of those things. They just want to have um, photographs which make them feel and look comfortable and natural but actually to make someone feel comfortable and look natural we have to pose them because otherwise they're going to be they're going to be rock solid stood in front of the camera with no shape in their body at all with this really um, stressful uh, expression on their face it's, there's going to be no joy in it, but by putting a little bit of input into the um, photograph and crafting that portrait, we pull out the energy between the couple. We, we pull out the energy between the, the couple and ourselves, and we start to have a bit of fun with it. And we can start to create photography that really showcases what our brides have invested in, the location, the dress, their handsome groom, everything starts to come together and we can really start to craft beautiful photography. So 
So gaining their trust is something that we have to do from the very off. OK, so as soon as we have that call, as soon as we have the email asking about um, our services, we have to become the honorary friend. Um, we need to be able to ask questions. We need to smile. We need to embrace them. We need to ask what they want out of their photography, how they want to um, be portrayed within their photography, what sort of style are they after. Um, we ask questions about, you know, their their uh, their their colour scheme, the venue, uh, you know, all of these things. And I know that this is, you know, this is this is stuff that we probably do on a daily basis um it's you know you probably do this all the time but this is really really important because it's the building blocks of that relationship that you have with that client and it's about building that trust so you can actually get them on side because the more you talk to them about the wedding the more that you ask questions about um you know their family how they met um what why is the venue so special to them um the more we invest in them the more they will trust us so when we say uh you know i've got this fantastic idea i would love to try and create it on your wedding day there's no pressure for us to be able to do it they'll be in a place where they'll just say yes and we'll have them eating out of our hands because we've we've managed that expectation from the word off now, when clients see my portfolio of work, they know what they're going to get. They, they buy into me because they know that they want to have um, um, creative, crafted um, portraiture, but it wasn't always the way. And when I started, I was very much a reportage photographer, creating and storytelling um, photo albums for my clients. But it was, um, you know, I was becoming a little bit bored. It was becoming a bit samely. Uh, and I really, really wanted to elevate my my style. I wanted to really be quite unique. I wanted to I wanted to go, hey, look, I'm a I'm a creative. I, I'm an artist and I want to bring my soul and passion into my work. Um, and so I had to get them on board because what they were buying at the time was a reportage photographer but where i wanted to be was to be a master uh, craft photographer crafting these beautiful portraits and they were really really great to work with all of my clients have been so open to my ideas they've really enjoyed the experience and that is because i've always been very open to their ideas very good at managing who they are, managing their wedding day and being on their team. Um, so one of the uh, best ways to um, get your clients on board is to present them with a working wedding itinerary of how you're going to work. So as soon as I get all the details about um, the venue, the timings, what time they're going to get married, what time they're going to sit down for their wedding bre breakfast, I can then start to put together an itinerary which will show uh, the bride and groom what time I arrive, what I expect and how I'm going to work and what's going to be delivered. So uh, right, I break it all the way down. This is just um, a very uh, uh, a snapshot really, if you like, of what I present to my clients. But I talk about uh, arriving at the wedding venue um, and what I do during that time. Um, now, in between the uh, in between arriving at the um, venue and photographing the bridal preparations, I have to build in time to create um, bridal portraits, which generally take about fifteen to thirty minutes, depending depending on how rushed we are. So within the itinerary, I break it down so the uh, bride gets into her wedding dress at a particular time. Then we have bridal portraits. Then we have her portrait with the um, bridesmaids and then her parents before I go and meet the groom. So everything is really, really detailed so they can see exactly what I'm going to be doing. And there's going to be no surprises. And that goes all the way through uh, right down to the drinks reception 
where we go off and I spend time with the bride and groom again. So after the um, ceremony is finished, um, we walk outside, they have 15 minutes to um, uh, have a glass of champagne, talk to friends and family. Uh, then I photograph the, um, uh, the uh, group shots very, very quickly. So I start with the whole wedding party uh, and then um, guests who aren't involved in the family shots, they then return to the drinks reception. Uh, and I'm left with parents, gra um, grandparents, if they're still with siblings. And that's it. So it's very, very um, quick. It's managed. No one is, um, you know, drifting about. Everybody knows where they need to be. And it happens very quickly. And by hammering through <laughs> the uh, family portraits, for, for want of a better term, um, we haven't lost the energy that has uh, that has been created throughout the day. We still have that excitement. There's nothing worse than seeing your bride and groom standing in front of you, having endless family group shots, um, and the life just drain out of their faces. You know, they they become sore because they're forced this, they're forcing this smile too much, and then by the time you have them to go and create your um, portraits you've lost them, they've gone. Um, and you have to then, then the flow of the whole wedding starts to unravel itself. So it's really important to keep those um, uh, group shots to a minimum um, and then go straight into the uh, portraits. And the best thing about it, these portraits have been planned and they've been discussed. So the brides and grooms know exactly what we're going to be taking and we will be able to execute and create um amazing photography within a very uh, short space of time and the reason why we do that is because um we have a pre-wedding consultation now this is something that you may already do um <clears throat> and you know i don't I, I i guess um if this is something that you do and you have this workflow in your wedding day um that's really great and i'm so pleased that you you do that but if this is new to you um the pre-wedding consultation the pre-wedding meeting is so so important it is not an engagement shoot this isn't about uh photographing and selling them work this is about you and your bride and groom coming together understanding how the wedding's going to work understand the flow of the day and for your bride and groom to have the opportunity to stand in front of the camera with you to create really interesting and breathtaking portraiture. And what we do during that time, excuse me, <coughs> is we, we teach our couples how to stand. We teach our couples how to hold their hands, how to hold their feet, how to hold their hips. So they can go away and have a little practice. And it's about having fun as well. So it's about bringing everyone together, having some fun, teaching them the fundamentals of posing, looking at your environment, um, seeing what architectural features you can bring into your photography, um, seeing how you can build depth, how we use light. Light is incredibly important. If there is no light, then there is no photograph. So even the most challenging environments that we find ourselves in, we can still create something fantastic by understanding what it is to be observant and look to see what's in front of us. In this shot here that I took of my bride in her kitchen, the kitchen was a mess. There was uh, croissants and fruit and coffee and champagne. Uh, you know, the kitchen was completely annihilated. Um, and uh, just just to the uh, camera left here, there was a conservatory where she was having her hair and makeup done in. But I saw this beautiful marble um, uh, uh, kitchen top and the light coming through the window was just stunning. And I was in someone's house and th there were there were no, you know, fantastic architectural features of a stately home. So I had to create something beautiful in the environment that I had. And because that light coming through the window was just gorgeous, um, we cleared up the mess. As soon as I saw what I had in my mind's eye, 
I was able to work quickly and quietly and respectfully to uh, clear the kitchen. So as soon as she was ready, we could come in, we could create that shot, um, and then we were ready to go on um, to, the, to the church. So it's about being observant and it's about taking your time. The, the first thing I learned when I was creating um, signature photography was to slow down. And I think where we are uh, very good at being quick and preempting situations as reportage and documentary photographers, when we're crafting portraiture is a different mindset. And we have to shift from being really quick and observant for sure, but being very, very quick. We go from looking for stories to crafting a story. And that's very, very different. So slowing down is key to creating um, uh, beautiful crafted portraiture and actually there's a nice there's a niceness about that because it gives us an opportunity to have a little bit of a breather when everything is being so fast paced and hectic and crazy when we change mindset to becoming a portrait photographer it gives us a little bit of downtime our minds are able to calm and we're able to able to see things differently when I took this into post, there were all the camera, uh, sorry, all the cupboard um, handles and, and things like that um, and little messy bits and pieces. So uh, I spent a lot of time on posting this as well. But the art of creating this type of photographer and uh, photography, sorry, and the starting point is always the light. If the light isn't there, then the photograph isn't there. So move on. Don't stress yourself out trying to create something in an environment which just isn't going to work. When we begin to slow down and we're looking at our environments, <clears throat> we begin to shoot with purpose. And what that means is we have the intent to create something magical for our clients. We begin to see things very differently and our whole world changes. You can't walk through a place without noticing something which could bring beauty to the photograph. You can look for pockets of light wherever you go. I was at a venue um, just at the weekend and of course it's winter time now, isn't it? So by the time two o'clock came, we were really losing the light. Outside was dull and gloomy. It was flat. There was nothing exciting about um, the light outside. So we went around the venue and we were looking for small pockets of light. And that's all we needed. We found we found a beautiful window, huge window on a staircase, very dark panelling, a uh, very, very heavy kind of red carpet, you know, like the horrible uh, patterned carpet that you get in hotels and stuff. But the light was so gorgeous that it created this fantastic texture coming over the couple's faces. And that's all we needed. And, it, you know, it was a, a three quarter shot. Perfect. Uh, similarly here, uh, Bright, uh, the groom <clears throat> is standing on this fantastic um, staircase in a hotel in Mayfair. We've got a beautiful window coming down this gorgeous light just flooding across his face creating beautiful shape he's got that lovely um you know broad light, uh, lit face with the shadow uh, on his nose slightly and then he's got the light coming through not quite rembrandt lighting too much light on the other side of the rembrandt lighting but still we have light and shadow and that is creating beautiful shape on his face <clears throat> now he's posed He's very, he's a very charming, he's, he's very eloquent human being and he's wearing a beautiful suit. So we didn't need to go too crazy. I just asked him to rest his hand on the banister, put his hand in his pocket, wait on back foot and turn his foot out. And we get this beautiful confidence shining through. And it's just those little things. When we say posing, I think people and I certainly did when I start, started out, I felt very intimidated by the word. It's very difficult to communicate what you feel 
and what you want in your mind's eye to translate that out in to get somebody to to understand what you're trying to say it becomes intimidating and challenging but actually all we're really asking to do is just to create a little bit of elegance and that comes by simply placing hands in various places in the pocket on the banister on the um on the table in the kitchen just going back you can see i've asked her to place her hands and uh, push her hip out this creates an energy and a flow and it becomes very easy after a while <clears throat> so once we've mastered these elements we start to bring in expression um, and imagination is a great way to spark emotion, ask questions that evoke a memory. Now, in this particular shot, this was taken in the bride's home again. It was on a staircase and there was a Velox window coming through and the space was really, really tight. It was on a landing. So the stairs came up and then they came into the bedroom. So the landing was very small. And that light coming through was just incredible but very very strong there's no way she could have had her eyes open because the the light was just well you can see from here it's just really 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 strong so i needed her to close her eyes to make her comfortable but she couldn't just close her eyes because she would be expressionless so i started to ask her questions that were evoking a memory so where are you going on i can't remember the questions i was asking but where are you going on honeymoon or you know what's the best um uh feature of, of your husband to be you know how do you feel about today and you don't want the answers what you you don't want the answers you want them to think about it because by them thinking about it it changes their facial facial muscles they become a lot more relaxed the the pressure on them is taken away they've gone to another place and that comes through in their expression and that's really important to create in portraiture as well, especially when you're photographing a couple on their own. So here I've asked her to lean against the wall. Now I could refine this further, actually. This won me an award in the um, uh, wedding category uh, at the convention, the society's convention last year. Um, and looking at it now, you know, I would do various things to change it. And this is really important because every time we photograph something, every time we have the opportunity to evaluate our work, the best thing we can do is print the image off. And this, I say this to all my mentees, print the image off and take a look at the image and write on that piece of paper, on that piece of photographic paper, what you love about the image and what you want to improve. And when you write, when you finish writing these little scribbles, you then pin it on a mood board in your office. Because every time you look at that um, uh, print that you've created with your notes on, those notes are being um, uh, uh, constantly referenced in your subconscious. So when you finally get out to recreating a shot like this, or you have the opportunity to do it again, um, you will remember, um, you know, how you want to refine it. How can you take it from one level and push it up to the next? So that's a really good key thing. And that's how I uh, basically uh, work towards my association, uh, my associate qualification in weddings. Every time I photographed a wedding, bits and pieces that I liked, bits and pieces I didn't like, I'd write it down, I'd pin it up on my board. And because we are creative, and because we are visual people, we need a constant visual reference on how to improve our work. That also gives you the ability to be more confident in your direction because you're, you've got this subconscious sort of messaging coming to you every day you walk into your office. It's a really good, it's a really good tool to do. So <clears throat> posing hands and feet make all the difference to how we feel. And this is so true. So it's going back to what I was talking about with the groom on the stairs and the bride in the kitchen. When we don't know what to do with our hands, we feel awkward. And actually, if you were to stand in a queue in a supermarket or, I don't know, a coffee shop, 
look how people stand and look how people behave because they oppose all the time and when you start to understanding how hands and feet um, behave and work and how it makes us feel more comfortable it takes an awful lot of pressure away so you know with hands we want them to be elegant we want the fingers to be soft we want the uh, fingers to be um, elongated we don't want them to be crunched up we want them to be long and elegant and soft because we can do a lot more than that also we don't really want to have the flat of the hand facing uh, the camera because as you can see it then becomes bigger than our faces and it takes a lot away from and wherever those hands are on our body they will become a huge distraction so we always want to make things a little bit softer and smoother and more elegant and keep the main point of interest on the face all the time it's the same with feet when we're standing, we never stand with our feet planted solely on the ground. We've always got a little bit of movement. Either, um, you know, we've got either weight on one foot or, uh, you know, and our hips slightly popped out or, you know, we never, we never stand firmly planted. So that's really, and we can have shape. We can really bring in a lot of shape by crossing over feet. Uh, almost think of a ballerina doing the various positions from first, second and third. Um, I was never a ballerina, but, uh, you know, um, just think about how um, shape is created um, and and have a play with it. Stand in front of a mirror yourself and look to see how your body shape changes when you cross your feet over or when you put weight on one leg and you push your hip out. Um, Creating beautiful portraiture is all about creating shape because it that is the story. That's the beauty. Also, to complement um, the, 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 the photograph, the, the bride, the, the dress, bring in redeeming features that surround us. So if we have a beautiful doorway and we've got fantastic light, you know, use it for framing use that to really draw the attention it does two things it takes our eye straight to the bride so it frames her it shows off the wedding venue really nicely as well so you know they've gone and spent an awful lot of money on that venue so let's make that part of their part of their um uh collection uh photography collection Sometimes brides will feel that they don't feel comfortable doing that. And so what you can do, and actually what I did do with this photograph was I'd had a, a, a gallery on my iPhone where I'd saved lots of poses that I really, really liked. And where I was trying to direct her, she wasn't quite understanding. I flipped my phone and I said, it's, it's a bit like that. And she was like, oh yeah, I can easily do that. It's like, great perfect and so using that as a tool as well is really good so if you're stumbling and 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 not too sure of how to articulate your um vision then show them show them it will save a lot of time as well boom it's done <clears throat> so as i was talking about shape with the uh feet this is a prime example I've asked the bride to uh, cross her uh, right leg over her left and it's created that beautiful shape in the dress. She looks phenomenal. The dress looks amazing. It's so nice. The connection between she feels incredible. She's going to feel incredible in that pose. And he looking back at her when you're posing a man, they need to be they need to come across quite masculine. So you do want them to stand tall. You can her place the feet at slightly different angles and have weight transferred from one uh, uh, leg to the other but also they can be quite broadly planted as long as you form a triangle so their feet are quite far apart and they've got this strong sort of stance coming through but it's all about creating beautiful shape composition 
composition really enhances, as I was saying before, about bringing those features in, the architectural features in to an image will really, really um, uh, enhance and draw, and draw our attention to the subject. Now, this image here was taken in a hallway. It wasn't particularly attractive, but what I really loved was the shapes that were being created within the shapes and the light coming in through the door. Behind the door is a kitchen and to camera right was the um, uh, wedding uh, breakfast area which they were laying out. And this was quite a busy corridor, but we were able to, just for a couple of minutes, we were able to photograph this, this beautiful image of my bride. Now, body shape is really important when we're talking about posing. And this bride in particular was very, very slight and her dress was really flowy. And if I hadn't have asked her to place her feet one in front of the other, we wouldn't get this elegant triangle coming through, which just rests on the legs, on the thighs, and it just holds that fabric. And, and it just creates this the, the light coming across it. We've got beautiful shadow detail. We've got lovely um, highlight detail coming through. She's looking uh, towards camera, so we've got that beautiful bit of light just kissing across her cheek. And I've asked her to put a little bit of bend into her elbow. It's not complicated. And actually, she looks quite relaxed. She looks like she's really enjoying it. And, and then we've got these shapes um, which are creating really strong composition. So slowing down again, become we become really observant. We're able to see things much, much differently than we were before. This image is really nice. Now, a lot of my photography so far has been photographed indoors. Um, I love photographing indoors because um, it creates the, the light coming through the windows really creates strong definitions, great contrasts, as I've been explaining. But outdoors, equally beautiful, lights pretty much flat all the time outside, depending on the time of day. But if we can find um, an area which can create a strong um, compositional value, as in this shot here, negative space, then it really does draw our attention to the bride and groom. So just asking her to hold her veil out, we get a lovely bit of shape coming through, beautiful story, um, lovely colour, it creates a very stylish, very punchy image which will be beautiful to hang on any wall. Here we are outside, we have got texture because of the time of day. So the sun is that lovely golden hour and we're just getting a little bit of backlight coming through. We've got a beautiful connection between this couple because they're, they're so in love. And, you know, I've spent time nurturing this relationship between me and them and they know what I want to do. I've shot this uh, on a zoom lens, so I'm quite far away. I've asked them to really connect, be cheeky with each other, say naughty things. I don't need to hear what they, I just don't need to hear it. Um, but what I want is to see that love and that passion coming through. And I've placed them right on the edge of frame here. Beautiful colours coming through. Fantastic image. Just, it's just evokes so much emotion in this. It's a great story. Here we were just walking back um, from the uh, venue that we had shot in. Uh, she's quite a funky bride. You can see that she's got some DMs on here. We were walking back and I saw this dolphin and I just knew what I wanted to take. So uh, we had a couple of minutes together just uh, trying to create something fun and exciting. Um, and having them on board, being experimental, it helps, she was an experimental person anyway, so it, it, it all came together, it worked really, really well. But if that dolphin wasn't there, then the story wouldn't be there, you know? It wouldn't have been the shot that I wanted to create. So slowing down, being observant, looking at environments, seeing what things we can bring into photographs to create something quite unique, it will really elevate you as a photographer. It will take your photography to a, 
another level. Guarantee, guarantee. So another another uh, beautiful shot. This was taken um, in Mayfair. I'm I'm quite confident about stopping traffic if I have to and have done. It makes it fun and exciting. Um, you don't need to uh, be out there for hours. You can be out there for minutes, seconds. Honestly, once you've got an idea and you know how to execute it, these shots happen quickly. It's about having that confidence. It's about training yourself to be able to execute um, photographs that you see in your mind's eye quickly and effectively. Um, they loved this shot. It was printed. He framed it and he gave it to her on Valentine's Day. Mentoring to Excellence is a new um, uh, uh, field. It's a new part of my business. This is what I do. This is my passion. Mentoring photographers to excellence. Um, and I'm, I hope that you found the presentation to be inspirational. I hope that you've um, taken and learned something and feel that you are going to take uh, uh, take on new challenges in, in 2023. That's great. Thanks very much. Right. So we have some questions. Let's get started with the questions. OK. Um, OK. So firstly, someone has asked, do you always work on your own? Do you have assistance and do you use uh, video or liaise with the videographer? Um, uh, up until recently, I have always worked on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, I do enjoy working with an assistant. They're normally people who uh, want to learn and, and, uh, and I train them up. Um, otherwise, I work on my own uh, and have done. Um, uh, if I am, um, I, I do video, but I do video for corporate. Um, so I don't I don't do it for weddings. It's a different mindset altogether. Uh, you're either one or the other. Um, if I am working with a videographer, um, I would always contact the videographer before and um, ensure that we both have time to lead. So I know that video photographers today are very, very creative and they want to um, have as much time with the bride and groom as you do. Um, and we don't want to go into, you know, uh, 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 a talent war <laughs> on a wedding day. So it's about collaborating with them and making sure that we work together to get it. I, I would tend to be the lead. I would want to be the lead and I would ask them to respect that. And then I'd give them the time to then do what they wanted to do. It's just about being respectful. Yeah. OK. Uh Next question is, how do you pose your couples? Do you use verbal instructions or do you get hands on sometimes? Um, I do get hands on, but only I ask first um, mm -hmm. if they might, if they don't mind, um, because obviously people are very um, are aware of personal space. Um, but I will try and verbalize it first off. And if I'm not getting the results that I want, I will go in and I will um, I don't want to say manhandle them, but I will move them around. I think sometimes what happens when you're working, um, sometimes our creativity, our creative flow can get a bit stunted. And what we're trying to say doesn't necessarily come across. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, do you mind me coming in? I just want to place your hand on a different uh, part of your husband's forearm or hold hold your arm like this or hold your hands like you know this. I, I, I am quite hands on, but respectfully, always. OK, um, question from Facebook is, do you always handhold your camera? Do you ever use a tripod? Always, always handheld because <laughs> I'm quite quick. Yeah, but you've got to be careful with that. So you want to be careful of your aperture and you want to be careful of um, your speed, your shutter speed, because what you don't want to do is have motion blur because you'll ruin your shot and you can go to all of that effort and you, you'll think that your focus is bang on. Um, and then when you get into post and you blow it up, you're like, oh no, it's got motion blur on it. And yeah. this is about slowing down and making sure that you um, are not only observant of your environment, but also of your kit. So just be careful of that. If you're going in and you're crafting and mastering a portrait, just be mindful of motion blur, press that shutter slightly, OK, so that leads to another question, which is what camera do you use? Oh, I'm a Nikon, <laughs> but a really old Nikon. So um, I have a, a, D, um, a D300 and a D810, 
um, which I'm hoping to upgrade um, in the new year. A little gift to myself is um, putting myself up into <laughs> the 21st century, actually. <laughs> so what, will you, will you be going mirrorless? I think I probably will, yeah. I think it will tick all the boxes for me because I do a lot of corporate work as well as wedding mm -hmm. work and I think it will just tick all the boxes. So have you, have you got a body in mind? Are you thinking Z9? I am thinking of the Z9, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice yeah. indeed. Okay. Um, do you only use natural light or do you ever use any off-camera flash or any off-camera lighting? Uh, I Because I work by myself, I work with natural light because mm -hmm. I haven't got the hands to set up lighting um, and set up my camera and set up a couple, you know, I, I, you need another person really for that. Yeah. Um, I work with reflectors. So if I wanted to bounce a little bit of light back in, then I would place the reflector, either lean it against me or on the floor or against a wall. So we get that, um, you know, uh, a, a little bit of sparkle in the, in the eye. I do put flash on in the evening when I'm recording um, the first dance of speeches, especially this time of year, I would put it on. But I, um, with the flash gum, I balance it out with the ambient light. So I would turn my uh, SB, it's not to hand, but I turn the, the flash around, right? So it's mm -hmm. not firing into the couple. It's not even bouncing off the ceiling. It's firing behind me. So it just pops off a tiny little bit of light um, and the power is turned down quite low. So you don't you don't want this darkness. You want a balance of warmth, ambient light with a little bit of pop from the flash. It works really, okay. really well. Yeah. As if you do work with a videographer, I mean, they're always delighted if you don't use flash, of course. Mm. Yeah, of course, because it will um, interfere with their yeah. whole lacing won't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes they're like frame, frame sort of lightning going on um what post processing software do you use and what is your process for processing everything everything's really simple mm -hmm. um because a lot a lot of my photography is quite classical mm -hmm. so um i tend just to keep it very very simple i just adjust the exposure boost the contrast protect the shadows and the highlights. I never, ever put a filter on my work. Mm -hmm. I never add a filter. It's, there's just no need for it. Um, uh, you know, sometimes if the colors are particularly strong, I may desaturate slightly to preserve the skin tones. Um, but I just feel that we can get too carried away with filters and things. And actually it becomes more, especially as a judge, it will become more of a, um, it becomes it it takes the eye away from the photograph because it become it can become too dominant perhaps you know if it's not handled well right. so all if you're going to use filters there's nothing wrong with it they, they create beautiful work um, I've seen amazing work with filters I just don't I just don't feel a need for it in my in my work but if you are going to use it use them subtly so it doesn't dominate the image Okay. Uh, actually, um, speaking of dominating the images, uh, someone's asking about your composition because they've observed that you often place the couples at the edge of the frame and they look quite small in the frame and she's just wondering what your thinking is there. Um, so um, on, on occasion, yes, I do. I put them in the corner because it's called negative space. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, the eye goes straight to the most interesting point within the image. So like the yellow wall, for example, um, there was nothing other than the yellow wall and then the bride and groom right in the corner. And that made for a very strong composition. It made them the point of interest, but it also gave the image a chance to breathe. Similarly with the gardens, I was able to actually put them um, in a little bit, not too much, they were still in the rule of thirds, but they were sort of towards the edge of frame. Uh, mm -hmm. And it just draws your eye in. So when you're using space, you're using it to uh, allow the eye to rest on your on your subjects, rather than having them right dead in centre all the time mm -hmm. and full frame, creating a little bit of mystery. Space can do that. And it just get, gives it a little bit more of a artistic yeah. approach. Um, now, 
this is basically asking you to condense your whole talk down really into a, a short answer. So what would you say is your top tip for getting fantastic wedding photographs? Slowing down. Right. That is my top tip. To slow down and become observant and start to shoot with purpose. Now, uh, during the talk, I spoke about the, the pre-wedding consultation. That is an opportunity for us as, as, as uh, creatives to start to build images before the wedding day. So you go in, you look around, you, you, you decide where you want to take, how you want to take, you find beautiful locations because there's no time on the wedding day to do that. We're too busy. We've only got half an hour with our bride and groom. So we plan the shoot beforehand. Now, as much as we plan, we know that that not, not isn't necessarily going to be the case on the day, but it allows us to train our mind so we can think that, OK, if it's not going to work over here, it's going to work over here. Um, and it's about it's just about planning. But slowing down is definitely key. OK, staying calm and remembering to breathe. Yes. And it's not easy sometimes. <laughs> no, no. Um, a couple of people are asking what uh, lenses you use. Um, so I have um, 70 to 200, 24 to 70, they're my workhorse lenses. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple of primes, but they, um, they're they not the top of the range primes, um, so they don't come out very often. Um, I, I work, because I work on my own, I just want to be able to be in control of my kit and not be changing lenses 24-7 mm -hmm. throughout the wedding day. Um, you know, I don't believe there's a need for it. Um, um it, it it's never affected me or had an impact on my work I'm, I'm there to do a job and actually you know the client wouldn't know the difference between a prime and a zoom so yeah. i just keep my whole workflow simple for me yeah and you go for the 2.8s rather than the f4s 2.8s yeah mm -hmm. yeah all the way through yeah and if you're thinking specifically about the more posed portraits have you got a preferred lens for those my 24 to 70 is perfect right and i i use all all of my portraits all of my work that i've created for competition uh and qualification has been shot on that lens i'm never going to get rid of that lens <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, what what flash do you use you mentioned um, uh, uh 900 uh i've got a 900 and i've got a 710 i think okay so yeah. Nikon specific. And yes, the last yes, question, I think I'm going to say this is the last question, but sometimes somebody jumps in with an one or two. Yeah, uh, of course. If, what do you do if a bride has lots of poses that they want to achieve, but they don't really suit your style or reflect your style? What do you do then? Or do you, do you go through the motions? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Because they're your client and it's about managing them, isn't it? And gaining their trust. So shoot what they want. Shoot, mm -hmm. them, shoot what they want and um, and then just say, oh, I've just come up with an idea. Would you mind if I mm. executed my idea? Yeah. And they'll say, yeah, 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 no problem. Do it quickly. If it works, it works. I'm a great believer in try everything. If it doesn't work, you're the only person who knows that it doesn't work. No yeah. one else is ever going to see it. Um, and with that mindset, it really does help you to... Um, uh, not get too freaked out on the wedding day, if you like, because it's very easy to miss a shot or miss an opportunity and then spend the next 10, 15 minutes beating yourself up. And while that's happening, you're, you're missing even more. Yes. So um, just don't get hung up on it. If, if something works, it works and great. If something doesn't work, then, you know, it doesn't work. There's a, a photographer. Sorry, I was gonna say, a photographer um, told me that she learned a lot about photography through playing golf. And that oh. was the, the, the pro who was teaching her said, when you take a shot, that's it. You can't stop, yeah. you can't keep thinking about it because it will affect how your next shot is. And so, yeah. you know, the shot, shot could be golf or it could be photography, but I thought, I thought yeah. that was a really interesting way yeah. of thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If, you, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's not the end of the world. OK, now this is interesting. Two two different people have come in with quite sort of or very connected questions. Um, right. Do you carry two camera bodies at a time or do you or do you use one? And do you have two camera bodies on a harness? 
Uh, I'd love a harness and it's on my um, kit list for uh, for next year. I will be getting one because I'll be changing my camera systems anyway. Um, I do have two camera bodies. Um, uh, sometimes I will swap lenses, but uh, uh, sorry, sometimes I've used one camera body and I've swapped lenses, but sometimes it's easier just to have the two. Yeah. And I have been in a situation where I broke my camera and I needed a backup camera. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a very nice experience, but I share, mm -hmm. I share my experience because somebody <laughs> might add something. Yeah. So I had my, I had my, um, uh, D, um, D810 mm -hmm. with me. It was at my 24 to 70 and I'd set up a bridal portrait and my, uh, strap was on my camera and I'd put it on the, on the table next to where I'd set it up, but the strap got caught. And as I lifted the camera, the strap got caught on the table. Somehow, I don't know how, the yeah. whole thing just came out of my hands. Now, it worked really well up until halfway through the ceremony, and then the whole thing just locked into place. And it was yes. it was horrendous, yeah. As, as soon as you said the word strap, I started to, <laughs> <laughs> I could start to clench my fist. I kind of thought, this is not going to end well. Oh, no, no. No, so um, no, my strap's fairly off that camera now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I mean, we often think about, we, we always, you know, we talk about having two cameras and making mm. sure that the, back, the cameras are covered, but it, do you have any duplicates of the lenses or is that why, you, you know, you have a couple of primes in the bag so you can, yeah, 2470 so, suddenly seizes, so you can switch to a prime or something. Well, yes, I do. I carry all my lenses with me because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And incidentally, on that day, I had to shoot the um, group shots on a wide angle lens. Mm. And I think it was my wide angle lens, I think is 18 to 24. And I had to I had to be mindful of how I composed the shot because there yes. was no way no one could. No one was going anywhere near the edges. <laughs> I was going to say, nobody wants to be the person at the edge. <laughs> No. There is some good software that can help with that, but it, it you know you can still end up with things going a bit. I uh, know it's really you know yeah. you've, got to, you've got to be mindful if you if that happens, be mindful of what you're shooting to create. Give yourself a lot of space is is uh, another top tip. A lot of my portraits, um, I I have a lot of space around my um, couples, and then yeah. I crop in. Okay, yeah. well, that is all the questions, Fiona. Great. Um, uh, uh, well, there's quite a few people who have dropped in to say thank you very much. That was really great. They've really enjoyed oh, it and, and learned something from it. So that's that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. It's lovely to meet you online. Thank yeah, you. you too. Take bye -bye. care. Bye. Bye.